All right. Third World War, right? Third World War is absolutely essential to my Mega Man story because, and I'm just going to call it that because it's the Imperium version of the Mega Man story. You know, like I shared with you, the Imperium version of Voyager. I, you know, if you, if you want to shame me for that, you're in the wrong channel. Um, the Third World War was brutal and devastating, but the biggest reason why was because for the first time in history, robots were viable as combat personnel, right? And so for the first time in history, countries could go to war and fight other countries over not just major issues, but quibbling details for effectively no cost of life. Now, I want you to imagine what it would be like if you if you were a politician. Hang on, kill a few brain cells. A few more. A few more. Just, just, just keep chugging the paint thinner. There you go. Um, and you were, uh, you know, really, really dumb, basically. And you were trying to sell your political platform of, I want to declare war on, or I want to go attack this particular area. And you don't have to sell your people on it as much as you normally would. You don't have to sell your cabinet, or your, uh, or your senator, your congress, or your, your constituents, or anything like that. All you have to do is say, we're going after these people because A, and don't worry, no one will die, because we're fighting with robots, okay? This is actually absolutely critical to the overall story of Mega Man, in my opinion. Because this is where everything began. That war was so brutally devastating to the point of absolute, like, almost making Earth uninhabitable. It was so devastating because everyone was fighting without restraint. <laughs> Lol, lurker. <laughs> um... Everyone was fighting without restraint, without even the slightest bit of holding back, and so entire countries were getting glassed by people who would just go to war and then escalate and then escalate and then escalate, because the idea was that people weren't actually dying, even though they obviously were, because there was so much devastation and destruction going on. The idea being that robot lives, if you could call them that, because they're not actually, are so incredibly useless that they can just throw them away. But as Bregwin just points out, thank you for catching on that subtlety, Bregwin. The idea here is that the world economy, in very GTA 4 uh, fashion, I'd like to say I did this before, or not GTA 4, excuse me, uh, Metal Gear Solid 4. I did this before Metal Gear Solid 4 even came out, though. Uh, the, the entire economy of the entire planet basically quickly became centered around the idea of supporting this robotic war effort. Oh my god! Come on, die! There we go. Jeez Louise. Uh, the entire world restructured itself as an economy will. Anytime there's a new demand and supply, the economy will restructure itself to that, and it will build on itself. It will rebuild on its own. And so the more this war kept escalating and more people kept declaring a war against more people and against more people and against more people, yeah, kind of like that, Boondock, except not comic relief, um, it got to the point where the entire economy of basically the entire planet was geared entirely towards constructing war bots and things that retain, retain robot war bots. Uh, debatable, Marley, but no, basically. Because the robots do have AI and, and uh, emotional grids and intelligence protocols and that kind of a thing. However, for the most part, they are not what I would call sapient or sentient. Uh, close. Not quite, though. They are incapable of independent thought. Only capable of acting as per a pre-programmed prerogative. Make sense? Um... So anyways, uh, this war just got worse and worse and worse and worse. The only thing that finally stopped the Third World War was the literal realization that the human race was going to uh, asphyxiate and on their own planet because there was literally they were lit they had destroyed so much of the foliage and uh, structure of everything that they literally were not producing the level of oxygen needed to support a populace on the planet. And so, yeah, we're talking a war on a level that is basically a Warhammer 40k level of devastation. Absolutely massive. Most of Europe has been destroyed. Almost all of Africa is gone. Huge chunks of the United States aren't there anymore, you know. Our entire regions, state-sized regions, have been converted into just swaths of resource manufactories and, and uh, uh, collections and that kind of thing. So, that's World War Three, right? Um, 
World War III ends when the, the collective leaders of the populace basically realize, oh god, we're literally going to asphyxiate to death. So they finally call together and actually set up a, a truce, right? Now, that's the beginning of the Mega Man story for two huge reasons, okay? Reason number one, Dr. Light. Reason number two, Dr. Wily. Both of these people were in their 20s and 30s when World War III started and lived through the duration of World War III. Uh, I go out of my way to never actually specifically list what happened to Wily or Light during um, during World War III. Uh, but it's I, I emphasize that it was bad to the point where they literally refused to talk about it to anyone ever. <laughs> Which should say enough by itself. I also mentioned that Wily's mother uh, died pointlessly and tragically as a casualty of war that wasn't even listed. Not even as a, as a casualty figure report, because f nobody cared by that point in the war. I'm being cautious, if you're wondering what I'm doing. I shouldn't be, it's much slower, but whatever. Warhammer 40k has interesting lore, because it's not depressing so much as over the top. Uh, yeah, Lyria, that's kind of what I tend to picture for that, in all honesty. Literally, because Africa is so rich in resources, of all types. So Africa was just kind of converted into a crater of construction. Now, I'm going to go for the jump. Wish me luck. No! I knew I failed it the moment I did it. I knew I failed it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I knew I failed that. For anybody who has been looking at the Robot War thing, uh, James Walken is another excellent example of a gentleman who is a byproduct of World War III. The good news is I had a life. So, that... Otherwise, that would have been... Uh, come on. That would have been the end of it. I may have just lost those 27 seconds, though, in all honesty. So I need to have a perfect heat, man. Hang on, Regal. Troll. See how long he's taken? Boom! There. <sighs> oh. Um, I don't know, Regal, it would take quite a bit to actually make that happen. Like, quite a bit. Oh. Save! New PB! Really good new PB. I aced Heatman stage. I almost always fail, and I did still fail on Heatman stage. I still have a death. I could still improve this run and get under 22 minutes. All right, you know you guys know the uh, you guys know the drill. Anytime I get a new PB, I gotta go kill the dragon. So okay, to continue, um, yeah, I could keep talking about how messed up the world is, but I think you get the idea. The world was completely trashed after the Third World War. Now here's the funny part: um, how many of you know your World War II history decently well? It, I'll just move on. Um, the idea here. For those of you not aware, uh, most of the planet was going to going a very bad depression. Awesome song hype. Uh, pretty much during and after World War One and up to World War Two, especially here in the states. Although I mean, the Lord knows it was it was basically affecting everywhere. I mention this because, as I've said many times, uh, World War Two ended the Great Depression. Nothing else. 
But it's why it ended the Great Depression that some people don't actually fully understand, because economy... Well, if you think about it, the economy, you know, the economies, however you want to phrase that, aren't actually logical. Not from general logical sense-making, right? So, what basically happened was World War II created an artificial need for a lot of industries to be founded in order to support the war effort, right? So a huge amount of the military uh, was 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 basically creating jobs for industry workers, factors, uh, new technologies, new ideas, all sorts of new stuff, right? Then, <laughs> then the war ended. Now this is actually really important because some people don't get this crucial step in the process. After the war, ah, oh, damn it! After the war ended, um, a lot of those people, uh, or a lot of those jobs basically could be converted for civilian use, is probably the best way I could put that. And as a result, had tremendous application. And the industry and infrastructure already existed, and that's also the most important part that, that some people don't really get. They already had the factories, they already had the people, they already had the everything. So the government, which at this point in time was literally up to its eyeballs in debt, starts selling off these factories and plans and ideas and workers and metals and concepts off to independent contractors, who then start turning that around into jobs, in inf industry, infrastructure, right? That creates economic movement. Remember, the very definition of an economy is the movement of money, okay? So that's why the economy got back on its feet. Because... The dragon died! Um, dragon holy! So, uh, so World War II basically dragged us out of the Great Depression, be, more or less by, as an as a unintentional consequence. Well, the same thing kind of happened with World War III in my, in my Mega Man setting, okay? What happened... I'm gonna go ahead and keep practicing, because I want to do a, a full run of this game one of these years. Um, what happened in Mega Man, uh, in the Mega Man-verse is after World War III, Everyone was making robots. Huge, massive, uh, massive infrastructure and industry devoted solely towards creating robots. Remember, I mentioned entire countries being craterized and mined, and again, basically all of Africa has been turned into a great big depot for, for the war front, right? That is all stuff that can be used in order to make robots for peacetime purposes, right? This is absolutely in essential for understanding the motivations of one Dr. William Albert Wiley. Because what ended up happening is the world nearly killed itself because of over-dependence on robots. And then, having barely survived that, immediately goes to over-dependence on robots in order to try and fix that situation. Do you see the problem with that? Because the only industry that became a thing at that point in time was robotics. So many other industries and, and, and uh, concepts, and ser especially service industries, basically vanished. Completely went away because they were obsolete for the new robotic uh, economy that was basically dominating the entire planet's uh, economic infrastructure at this point in time. So, trust me, if I ever take over the world, you're either not going to know or you're going to want it to happen. Um, so as I was saying, Wiley does this, or, or Wiley sees this, and reaches a point in time where he's like, okay, this is insane. Why are we doing this? Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So, Light, well, he went through some hell, too. Now, one of the biggest points of, of the Mega Man 1 story, in my opinion, the Robot War, is the idea that... The robot war is actually the biggest war, well, excuse me, the second biggest war ever fought in history, and the biggest war of the various Mega Mans. The idea being that Mega Man 1 was actually the massive, huge, incredibly destructive conflict where Scene shows up. And every subsequent Mega Man game was actually a much uh, smaller and, and, and lesser scale uh, conflict, if you understand what I mean by that. Which you probably don't. Um, so, the robot war was supposed to be hell. And two characters have already actually gone through hell. One of those was uh, Wily and one of those is Light. Both of them went through World War Three. Light made it through hell with the best of his humanity. That, that, that's the way, that's the intent as, as a writer. The idea that he got through hell and came out 
as uh, an idealist, an optimist, someone who wants to help humanity and help the world and think about a better future for tomorrow, right? Wily gets through hell with the worst of his humanity. Cynicism, pragmatism, pessimism, uh, the idea that humanity is going to destroy itself and there's no actual... Shut up, evil knights. There's no actual hope for us, etc., 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 right? Damn it! I know I should have held it. Um, it's okay, this is a practice run. I don't even have a timer running. Bzz. Bzz. <laughs> Bzz. So, uh, oh god, I wasn't even looking at the screen that time. Um, where was I? Ah, right, okay. So... <laughs> yes, Rosulia, I have. Uh, so Rock... Uh, well, okay, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's rewind a little bit. So by the time of Mega Man 1's start, there's this implication that Dr. Wily has been using this teleporter. That's been tossed... It's been making him insane, right? But... <sighs> The idea is supposed to be that there are hints that Wily has... <laughs> Whoops. There are hints that Wily has already uh, kind of gone over the bend, if you know what I mean. Even before the game has begun, right? God, I'm really not paying attention. I'm, I'm thinking about the, the story of Mega Man more than I am about this stage. This isn't even that hard or long of a stage. Hmm. I wonder if Zeiss is still running. There we go. We're good now. That whole thing is a lot easier than it looks. You just have to know what's coming. So, again, memorization. Uh, where the hell was I? <laughs> I'll take your word out, it seemed. Uh, right, okay, so the idea here is that, uh, Wily has already been, uh, come on, let me up there. Wily's already been using his teleporter by the time Mega Man 1 starts. Now, obviously the teleporter makes it worse. But basically what the teleporter does is two things. One, it scrambles his brain. Uh, I actually, there's actually a specific point at which this is supposed to be shown deliberately. Um, but shrug. And, um, the, you got this, Ice, I'm telling you. You trying to, to narrow it down, I'm, I'm assuming? Actually. Metalman is actually one of the harder robot masters. You guys have seen me die to him plenty of times. He's not fully controllable like so many of them are. I am secretly Dr. Wily, by the way, guys. Just to let you know. You know what? I'm going to stop talking about my story for Mega Man. I'm sorry. I'll shush. <laughs> ah, one there. One there. I don't remember where the ones are on this one. So I may be about to die. I know there's one, like, right there. <laughs> Okay, we're good. No, we all know that uh, Aquaman is the most pathetic uh, uh, robot master, Evil Knights. Okay, so this section's actually really hard without Leaf Shield. Uh, yeah, Bregwin, Bra that's basically exactly right. And so, he, he still functions. His brain still works. It's just that it doesn't work correctly. So the idea here is that the teleporter doesn't actually drive him insane. What it does is makes it difficult for him to uh, concentrate, which encourages him to focus. As weird as that sounds, okay? Uh, I guess, sure you? I mean, I wouldn't highly recommend them. By the way, happy birthday, uh, Regal, from two days ago. <laughs> Why are you eating cake now, man? <laughs> <laughs> Aw, oh, damn it, I thought I could make that jump. Whatever. Uh, just practicing here. Um, shoo. Where the hell was I? 
Uh, right, right, okay, so, um... The, the reason this the, the, the teleporter reacts with Wily the way it is, is Wily's a genius, right? I mean, in my personal opinion, Wily has always been the smarter of the many roboticists or ro robotechnicians that exist in the Mega Man series, uh, past, present, future. And so, Wily is so much of a genius. Now, I want you to imagine you are really, really, really good at something. I don't care what it is, okay? You're amazing at it. So you don't even have to try, okay? You are so good at bleh that you don't even have to try to be good at it, okay? But, imagine if while you're doing it, something's just in the way of you being good at it, okay? Uh, the example I like to use for this is, imagine the idea that you were an amazing athlete once upon a time, and you've lost your leg. Now, this is an easy thing to imagine, because this has actually happened many times in real life, and there are several examples of this kind of thing happening in real life, where there is someone who lost their leg and be, still went on to become a great athlete. And the reason why is because before, they didn't have to try. They were so good. They were so... I need to use a two, two item here, don't I? They were so good that they didn't have to bother trying. Okay, do you understand where I'm going with this? So, Wily was so amazing at, at everything robotics-wise that he didn't even have to try to make things that were incredibly genius. Then he started using the teleporter. Now, why did he start using the teleporter? Let's answer that question really quick. World War III. He developed it during that time. Now, I don't say the exact circumstances that led to it. But the entire idea is the fact... I think I can jump over this guy. Uh, the, entire idea, uh, the entire idea of this guy... Okay, I'm going to do a safe state here. Because I don't remember how exactly to do this pattern. Uh, the entire idea is that he needed some place to go where he could just get away from literally everything because it was simply too much for him to deal with. The horrors of the war and the nightmares that it brought were too much. I just screwed up bad. I don't have an energy tank. Damn it. There we go. Just a sec, guys. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's reload. I need to practice this fight. There's a very specific trick to do this without restarting this entire level. So I'm going to be practicing that here. I'm going to go and not get here, hit here. This room confounded many young kids when it came out. Ah. Uh, okay, I got him. Die, die, die. Okay, I screwed that up a bit, but I think I can still recover. If I just... No matter what, if I do this in one run, it's still faster than doing this entire stage twice. By quite a bit. So I just need to practice on doing this quickly. This is how you don't get hit by these things, by the way. There's so much lag in this room that you literally warp through their uh, attacks doing that. And... win. That's how you do it in one run, if you're wondering. Take note. Okay, so Wily built the teleporter specifically to literally get away. I've talked before about the idea of having one place where you feel comfortable, where you feel safe more so than anywhere else. And the one place where you feel like you can be at peace, you don't have to have your defenses up, you don't have to have your masks up, you can just be yourself, right? Um, for Wily, that place, I don't remember, you know, I'm just going to do it in counterclockwise, screw it. Um, that place was a place he visited when he was a young ch kid way up in Chile in the Andes Mountains. At least I think it's that's the Andes Mountains. Ow! Um... And so, he would literally just teleport up there. 
every now and again to just get away and think for himself. Now, of course, he um, would scramble his mind each time he did that, but then he would then he just kind of let himself languish, right? To the point where he didn't actually do anything with his life because, I mean, why would he, right? He has no need to. There's no reason to try until Light comes along and says, Hey, I've got this idea for something that will challenge your intellect. Let's make a sentient robot. Let's make a robot that can think and function for itself. By the way, I always feel bad for Bubbleman here because the one thing that was really a threat in his room, the spikes at the roof, have been removed. So it's like... Yeah. Bye, Bubbleman. Ironically, Quickman is also a lot easier without his things in the way. These rematches are way easier than most of them are. Um, so Light approaches Wily saying, let's make a sapient sentient robot. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. Lower right. I might do this first next time. Crashman is still a bastard. The same bastard he always is. Hang on, I, I'm concentrating on this guy. Okay, not too bad of a fight. Not the best, but whatever. Where the hell was I? Okay, so then they make uh, a brand new experimental robot with the ability to think and reason for himself, someone who is technically sapient sentient. I'm, of course, referring to Blues, a.k.a. Protoman. Well, Protoman... Um, doesn't really... Basically, his... Um, his mindset... I can't even call it that, because he literally malfunctions. He's not even a person. He's not... He's really malfunctioning. His brain literally starts working wrong because it was designed to process so much information so quickly that it would adapt to new input virtually instantaneously, to the point where it basically, uh, he became unstable to the point of not even being considered, you know, intelligent almost, if you know what I mean. Okay, this is going to be like the hardest part of this entire run right here, doing these two bosses with just the buster. Oh my god, I did it. Ah, uh, wow. That was rough. Anywho, um, Blues went nuts. Blues went to the point where he was was completely malfunctioning. I can't even call what he was insane. He would say nonsense words, and his his actions would have no correlation to his input, and nothing would have anything to do with anything. It was all completely wrong, right? Now, hang on. There's a very specific strategy for doing this section quickly and without losing a lot of health. Now, I know, I know, it's Buster only run, but I need to use bubble, bubble Lead on the last boss, just like I had to use Crashman's. There we go. Believe it or not, that's actually kind of a tight thing. You really have to do that uh, precisely or you get stuck behind the acid. Hang on. Let me switch to Bubbleman. By the way, in my story, this is not Wily. Take that as you will. Yes, Blues is Protoman, yes. It's just Blues in the Japanese version, and I kind of refer to him as Blues, because I'm weird. I was stuck on this boss for an insane amount of time. Time, by the way. Um, so yeah. Uh, blues goes, goes haywire, and both... And again, both scientists act in the way that is appropriate to their mentality. Light immediately turns around and starts saying, Nope, okay, we're going to do something different. No sentience. No sapience. We're just going to make robots with intelligence that are still limited in their learning capacity. And we're going to make them um, capable of helping to restore the world. The first six androbots, right? Uh, and that's where the term comes from, androbots. In between android and robot. Better than robot, less than android. Follow? Um, and android there being defined as a fully sentient sapient individual, uh, similar to data or data from uh, Star Trek. 
<sighs> um, <laughs> Wily, on the other hand, starts using his teleporter more. Now, I mentioned earlier the teleporter scrambles your brain. And I mentioned the whole ma imagine you don't have to try thing. Well, again, like the prosthetic thing, Wily, when he had to actually build stuff, when he was actually working on stuff, he had to try really hard to think at all because his brain was so scrambled by using the teleporter. But the thing is, as he was use because he was using his brain so so clearly and refinedly, putting all of his focus and thought into building and designing. What happened was his brain basically realigned to the way it should be. All the pain and all the discordance of that went away as his brain basically forced itself to function properly, right? So this is also why I've always said Wiley is the better scientist, because his when he, w he w had this disability, he had this inability to function, and so in order to actually do better, he had to... Oh, wow, Dios. He had to... Um push himself to his absolute limit, so he was always doing his best work, whether he wanted to or not. Make sense? Um, so, the other thing is it forces him to focus more, because one of the biggest uh, side effects of the teleporter is that you lose the ability to focus. You, you know, your thoughts get blurry, and it's hard to concentrate on anything. So, in order to combat this, un uh, subconsciously, Wiley would start fixating on things start focusing on certain ideas or concepts or whatever. This is why he starts off with, you know, humans are dooming themselves. Good night, Smash King. Humans are dooming themselves, and, you know, humanity needs to be taught a lesson to robots, you know, over-dependent on robots, to I need to teach humanity a lesson, to why are they trying to stop me, to I need to stop Rock and Dr. Light, to oh god, I'll kill those two bastards, you know. You can see how his focus shifts over the course of the first game in my storyline. Um... Because he needs to keep focused on something, and yet it's it's it must be so incredibly frustrating. Because um, I hate you, Bregman. <laughs> uh, it must be so incredibly frustrating. Because imagine there's something you want, and you don't want it that badly, but you're res you, you you can't get it. You know, you, you screw up, or you 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 are pushed back, or whatever. So you go to get it again, and you're pushed back again, and you're like. Well, and then you try harder, and then you fail again, and then you try harder, and then you fail again. What used to be just a minor issue becomes a major fixation, become, and will eventually grow to the point of obsession. This is what actually happens to um, to Dr. Wiley. He gets to the point where he is absolutely fixated on rock and on light because he can't stop them. No matter what he does, he continues to fail at this basic task. It's actually very much the Ahab thing. For those of you who have actually read Moby Dick and know that it wasn't just about a revenge story, but there was a whole, a long human progression of his fixation to the point of obsession, right? Um, so that's Dr. White, uh, Dr. Wiley's story in a nutshell. I'm going to shut up now because I'm done playing the game. And I think like two of you are listening anyways. So, new time. Yay. Yes, that was kind of the point, Shadow. The real... There was also a, another niggle in that. Where's my forum? <laughs> Where's my forum? Here it is, speedrunning. Let's go ahead and post my new time in Mega Man 2. I better see some of you guys posting times in Mega Man 2 soon, or I'm going to be very upset. How could I possibly have a 2151? That literally is is better than I have currently, and that's wrong. Like, this 2208 is one of my best runs. Oh, I know why. I know why. Hang on. Let me make sure I've got something set up right. I, uh, in my version or in the actual version, Golvide, because there are two very different things. Sorry, what'd you say, sir? Oh, yeah, that's right. You were pointing it out. I think I know what's happening here, and I need to... Because there's a mode for this uh, time program that will, instead of putting your actual time at the end... Stop. Um, it will put your... Uh, it'll put the combination of your best 
segments. So like if you do a really good segment and then you do crap the rest of the time, and then you do a really good good segment and you do crap the rest of the time, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it'll combine all of those. Yes, that's the one, Lurker. Thank you. It'll combine all of those times into your best time. I think that's my 2151, a combination of my best segments, which is not actually my time because I don't do time that way. In fact, I don't know anybody who does time that way. I'm not even sure why that's an option on most modern uh, time runner things. So... What I want at the end there is personal best as opposed to, yeah, okay, here it is, best segments. So, see that, see my best segments time is 21 minutes and 15 seconds. You see that over there? That's where I got that 2151. So, no, I don't want that. I want my personal best, my actual time, which is 2208. That's why. It was wrong. I guess that's true, Evil Knights. I just, I don't know. I, I guess that's there to give you something to aim for. So I guess technically I could aim for a 2115 or whatever that was if I did absolutely amazing at everything. Haha, <laughs> you're right. Yeah, I'm actually rather pleased with my Mega Man 2 run. I'm getting pretty solid on it. I really would love to see you guys try and try and match my time. What's Bowman's current time? Bowman is at 2303, which is really good by the way. And Illyria is at 3231 which is not as good, but is actually still quite good. So if anybody is just starting, uh, 32, 31, there's your time to beat right now for uh, for getting into it. <laughs> Join me in speedrunning. You know what? While we're here, where is this? What was his rule set for this? We need to get you a real computer, Shadow. And yes, I'm saying it that way. Bring it! Um, warpless. Mm. Oh, right. Goldvig asked for my version. Right. I think Wiley was genuinely sympathetic uh, to AI rights until Dockman basically drove him to clinical madness. Um, <laughs> In my version, Dockman is actually a huge aspect uh, of the of the story. Invented in Mega Man 1, he's actually the fake Mega Man you fight in Wily's stage, uh, in Wily's robot, whatever place. Um, and he is the one who's behind Mega Man 2. In my version, uh, you did, Scene. You, you win, man. Um... In my version, Mega Man 2 was not actually started by Wily. Wily was captured after Robot War and put into an institution where they were starting to re rehabilitate him and try to fix what was wrong with him. However, basically politics happened. I'll skip ahead. You guys know my storytelling style. A lot of politics, a lot of history, a lot of cultural crap. And basically... Nobody wanted to re. Some people wanted to rehabilitate him. Some people didn't. Some people wanted him to burn. A lot of people just plain wanted vengeance. I mean, a lot of people died uh, during Robot War. So um, the long and the short of this is that Wiley uh, was screwed, and he was about to become a, a political scapegoat for a dozen different things when someone shows up out of nowhere and ma uh, breaks him out. Okay. And that would be uh, that would be Dockman, uh, Doc Robot from Mega Man Three. If you have no idea who I'm talking about, so Dockman breaks him out. Dockman is someone who also had sapience and sentience built by Wily, and abused by Wily during Mega Man One. Not deliberately, just because Wily was crazy. He he literally had a brain that didn't function properly, and so uh, he Dockman really really didn't care for that, and basically only actually cared about one thing: revenge. And so Dockman goes out, finds and reprograms himself several of the robot master, uh, several robot masters that have been built by people other than Light and Wily. So these are much weaker versions than the ones in, in Mega Man One. Um. Ah. Oh, ooh, Nick. Mm. 
And then, um, so Doc Robot gets these guys together, starts another little thing. Basically, and it's supposed, it's deliberately designed to ape the one that uh, Dr. Wily did in Mega Man 1 because Doc, Doc Robot doesn't fully have the ability to come up with new ideas himself, right? So he just uses the exact same plan that existed in, in, in uh, Mega Man 1 of Wily's in order to c conduct his own I'm going to take over the world scheme in Mega Man 2 because he wants to kill the crap out of Rock, who just basically destroyed him in Mega Man 1. He wants to kill all the humans because of things that would take too long to, to explain, but basically there's a, a feedback loop uh, error in his processing that makes him think that they need to go away. And finally, and most importantly of all, classic Dark Pit. <laughs> Very true, Evil Knights. And then, um, and then he wanted revenge on Wily. So I want you to picture for a moment a robot that has the ability to holographically change itself and adapt its weapon types to other different things, which is f solely fixated on the idea of torturing you mentally, who has you captured in his lair, in his skull castle. Now... One of the things that I always decided was that R Wily, at the height of his power during the first Mega Man game, actually built all eight of the uh, all eight of the Skull Castles then as backup fortresses. And Doc Robot obviously would know all of those or so he actually goes to just one of those backup fortresses. He doesn't actually build one. Um, I want you to picture the idea of Wily, who is I want to stress already just brain scrambled as, re as a result of using the teleporter for decades. Who is like, oh god, everything's wrong. And then he, he looks up and there's Dr. Light. And and Light is like, oh, William, come on, we gotta get out of here. Oh god, we gotta get out, we gotta get out. And and they, they they do this daring escape and they barely get away. And oh god, they get outside the Skull Castle. And, and Light's like, okay, okay, we're gonna get you. We're gonna get you to safe, my friend. We're gonna get you safety. And Wiley's like, oh, he's, he's shaking. Wiley's shaking. He's like, oh god, this is so wonderful. Thank you. And then Dr. Light turns and stabs him. Like with just a nice, nice little knife, not to, not to kill, just to injure, just stabs him right in the back, and then he turns and he starts laughing at him and mocking him and telling Wiley how stupid he is for following such a stupid trick, and then Wiley passes out from blood loss, and Doc Robot, who was pretending to be Doctor Light the whole time, trans transports him right back inside his cell, screwing up his brain, and then Doctor Wiley wakes up and not even sure if that actually happened or not. Imagine this happening every day. This is what Doc Robot was doing to Wily during the course of Mega Man 2. Horrifyingly torturing him and completely destroying any concept of sanity or sense that he actually had. Because screw him. That's, um... So that's one of the major plot threads of my Mega Man 2. Um... I don't like dark reboots. I, I swear. <laughs> this has always been my story for the Mega Man thing. Um... Towards the end, that, uh, that, you know, that alien you fight at the end of Mega Man 2, that's actually Doc Robot. Uh, and, you know, you know, the whole Dr. Wily thing, that's actually Doc Robot that whole time. Uh, literally, Mega Man, at the end of Mega Man 2, is there to rescue Wily. However, this is a Wily who, by the time he's there, is so insane past all concept of sensibility that he is raving and screaming and literally crapping his pants and and sweating and blood puking up blood at the very sight of rock of Mega Man to the point where Wily he has to be sedated in order to be brought in and uh light actually and so this leads into Mega Man 3 consequently with uh in Mega Man 3, you'll remember the beginning of Mega Man 3 is all about how Wily has been redeemed and, and all that fun stuff. The idea was that Light, realizing that the world would never give Wily a chance to actually try to recover himself, took him under his own wing and out of his own pocket uh, started paying for the massive amount of therapy and actual physical uh, therapy that he needed. Because again, I want to stress again, Wily's mind is wrong. It's in the... pieces are in the wrong places. So he's been undergoing uh, extensive surgery and extensive uh, treatment, extensive trauma, you know, all that fun stuff, in order to try and redeem him to the point where Wily feels like he can function again as an actual human being, which leads Wily and Light to actually working together again at the beginning of Mega Man 3. This is where everything just goes really wrong for Wily, because during Mega Man 3, Doc Robot, who is still alive, by the way, 
uh, obviously because he's in Mega Man 3, uh, gets a hold of another individual, Blues, a.k.a. Proto Man. And Proto Man, well, okay, I'll just give you this away. Uh, <laughs> Proto Man, my, in my version of, of Mega Man, Proto Man was the prototype for the Maverick virus. Blues is, you know, that remember that sentient, sapient intelligence that Wily and Light built years before Mega Man 1 even started? That intelligence that became Blues' intelligence? That's the prototype for the Maverick virus, right there. So, uh, think on that, if you will. So anyways, <laughs> the idea here is that when Doc Robot got a hold of Blues, Doc Robot agreed to try... Well, I shouldn't say that. Doc Robot basically abused the hell out of Bruce, Blues. You remember how in Mega Man 3 they refer to him as Break Man? Try to think of that as a mistranslation and call him instead Broken Man. In other words, the idea is that Blues is so far gone in his own uh, deleterious state, mentally speaking, that Blues cannot actually function anymore. He is effectively a robot from that point on. He doesn't actually have sentience or sapience. He is just a robot acting under order. So Doc Robot gets a hold of him, uses him to get a hold of eight more robots, and basically tries to gather all the data from the previous robots from one and from two in order to make Doc Robot's final attempt at this. Uh, I always parceled art the Mega Mans into arcs. The first arc is basically Doc Robot's story. Uh, Mega Man 1, 2, and 3. Mega Man 4, 5, and 6 is much more Dr. Wily's tragedy, which I'll get to in a moment, uh, which is caused by the end of Mega Man 3. See, what happens is Wily was legitimately converted. You know, he was legitimately healed and actually trying to do all this stuff. And then he... <laughs> he, re <laughs> he got to a point where he uh, had successfully built... Uh, Gamma, the peace robot, and Rock had successfully defeated the eight robots and it successfully pulled down Doc Robot, finally destroyed Doc Robot. They found out about Blues. Wily is like, I need to I need to fix Blues, you know, and, and Light agrees with him. Light and Wily both agree. We need to get to Blues. We need to try and fix him. Oh my god, that poor man. That poor, poor robot. It's Androbot, whatever you want to call him at that point in time. Effectively, the first Reploid, for all intents and purposes. That's the point. Blues was the first Reploid. Um... They need to go and find him and save him and help him, and so they send Mega Man into Wily Castle, the third Wily Castle, which is where Broken Man, a.k.a. Blues, a.k.a. Proto Man, actually is. Go through the whole of the place, and by the time... Now, during this, there's a sub-story a sub that's been going on. See, news about the fact that Dr. Wily is alive and is at Light's lab kind of eat leaks out. And that makes everything go to hell very quickly. Dr. Light is actually arrested and put on trial for war crimes as an accessory to Dr. Wily's uh, encounters back in Mega Man 1. That leads to some very unpleasant circumstances where Rock actually tries to go back and literally fight his way in to break Dr. Light out, which actually makes Dr. Light's case worse uh, in every way. Dr. Wily being someone who has genuine friendship and caring of his old friend, goes out of his way to build, uh, to basically take Gamma, the super robot they've been, and go and try to actually take back uh, Light and, and rescue Rock in the process uh, from, from the whole situation, which leads everyone to see... And I, I want you to... Because this kind of makes sense. Imagine the common peoples. Okay, Dr. Wily tries to destroy the world and conquer it. Ah, but then he's defeated. Okay, we're all safe. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we find out that he's in Dr. Light's lab recouping. And then Dr. Light, so we bring Dr. Light in to figure out what the hell's going on. And then this giant battle robot named Gamma, which Light and Wily had been working, working on in secret, by the way, comes in, piloted by Wily, to rescue Light. What are you going to think under those circumstances? So the world damned Wily and damned Light in that moment, and Wily, who at this point in time was still much more sane, nevertheless had, this, had the same critical flaw that was as a result of his brain not working incorrectly, and that flaw was fixation. And so he became fixated on the idea that the world was wrong. Absolutely, fundamentally wrong, and needed to be fixed. So, he takes Gamma goes to his castle, because it is his Skull Castle, and basically gets, start, uh, gets started working on his own little circumstance. Dr. Light actually spends basically all of his time in my version of Mega Man 3 in Skull Castle 3 during this part, uh, part of the thing, 
trying to talk Wily out of it and failing bad. And when I mean bad, I mean, let's just say that Light basically starts to kind of agree with Wily by the end of Mega Man 3 until it gets to the point where Wily is willing to... Well, okay, Wily's original plan had to do... Uh, in it, I shouldn't say original plan. The idea is, as, the, as Rock is going through Skull Castle 3 to rescue Light, um, he is doing so with the intent... Uh, uh, Wily's design and intention is to go out, basically set out uh, a dampening network across the entire planet, whose entire purpose is to shut down the world, the way the world functions. I, it, I don't know how to explain this, just trust me, because I actually worked out kind of how this would work, technologically speaking. The idea is that it would shut down certain key aspects of how telecommunications work, so that the world would lack the ability to coordinate with itself. The only one who would actually be able to translate and, tra uh, and, and, and communicate is Wily, and anyone who actually... Uh... What do you mean, Brother Ox? Uh, Wily and anyone with him. That was his original plan. That's the idea of why Dr. Light, uh, that's one of the idea, of why, that's, that's why Dr. Light uh, started coming over to Wily's plan, because Wily's plan had no intention to kill everyone. This was not a, I want a massive army of robots to wipe out the world. This is, we're going to shut the world down and tell them, sit down, shut up, stop killing each other, and stop being stupid. And Dr. Light kind of agrees with this idea because Dr. Light is someone who has been clinging to his idealism and to his and his perspective of, 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 of believing in something more, that humanity can actually be something more. And he has been consistently and repeatedly proven wrong over and over and over and over and over and over. And the one person who is actually disagreeing with him, the one person who is like, hey, you know, I, I, I think we should actually do something about this is talking a lot of sense. And that person is Wiley. And Dr. Light also starts to think, well, you know, if I'm here, if I'm here as a tempering agent of Wily, the two of us, the two of us could actually coordinate and ensure that we have a proper plan. Wily is still unstable. Even Wily admits this. But Light and Wily working together, that's the unbreakable team. They've got this. Towards the end of Mega Man 3... Um, Rock breaks in there, beats down, um, beats down Gamma, and Wily is tossed out, and, and Wily ejects, and, and Rock brings him out safely. Rock doesn't know any of this, by the way. Rock has been out of communication of all this, okay? Rock has no idea what's been going on with Light and Wily. So Rock is there to rescue Light when Light actually doesn't want to be rescued. The castle starts coming down, the whole place is, is shuddering because Blues has just set the self-destruct mechanism. And Blues comes in and kidnaps Wily. You remember the end of Meg Mega Man 3, right? You remember how that happens? So Rock, having no idea what's going on, goes and takes Light and escapes with him. And this is critically important. Light, uh, uh, Rock being in uh, in a, a dire situation and only having a moment in order to deal with this. Yeah, basically, Golvig. Uh, Rock, having only a moment to deal with this, grabs Light and teleports out. First time Dr. Light has been teleported. You could probably see already where this is going. So that leads into Mega Man 4, 5, and 6, the next arc, the next trilogy. I'm sorry, you're grumpy, Brother Rocks. Um, I'm just sharing my, my Mega Man storyline, which is basically nothing to do with the actual games. Um, so, Mega Man 4, 5, and 6 is, is a whole massively longer story, which I don't want to really get into right now. But the idea is that Wily, having been kidnapped by Blues, is forced by Blues to fix him. But the problem is Wily still doesn't think correctly, and so that's one of the reasons why Blues is still kind of... <laughs> Uh, several games in, until Blues finally gets, uh, is, is gotten a hold of by Light and fixed properly. Um, Cossack comes into things uh, a lot earlier than Mega Man 4 in my storyline. Remember I mentioned there was a lot of political claptrap back in Mega Man 2? Dr. Cossack, you, you probably could guess this from the name, is from... This, the, what's left of the Soviet Union, right? Now, I, I know, I know, the Soviet Union doesn't exist anymore, but you get the idea, okay? The, the Russian Republic, whatever you want to call it. Um, in my story, it was still the Soviet Union, which reformed during World War III. Uh, Dr. Cossack 
was basically someone who he's different than Dr. Light, still has that same set of idealism, but he also is tainted by a huge amount of pragmatism and bitterness. He's actually kind of an in-between between the severity of the cynicism of Wiley and the severity of the idealism of Light. Cossack's like right in the middle. So although as, as far back as in Mega Man 2, Cossack was being used as a puppet and a tool by those around him in order to make all of these different robots for, for war purposes or for political purposes or whatever. And uh, don't steal his muffin, Shadow. Give that muffin back right now, Shadow. Give that muffin. <laughs> See you around, Adam Memnon. And yes, scene, the idea is light eventually does start descending as well. A very gradual descent, which will not uh, fully realize itself until much further, actually. <laughs> uh, leading into Mega Man 9, consequently. So the idea here is that Cossack uh, was a political tool and never actually fought anything. I mean, remember, the only wars that have been happening have been minor skirmishes. There's no World War IV that's happened. Uh, that would actually be Robot War itself. But the idea here is that Cossack gets so sick of it and so twisted of it that he finally decides, you know what, screw you guys. I'm going to go, and he, he arranges a, and this is going to be in the Mega Man uh, 3 novel, he arranges an entire um, Ocean's Eleven style uh, a heist with his robots, which he's designed the ones for Mega Man 4. He designs it, he makes them go, and, and they rob the crap out of the Soviet Union. Okay. Uh, most of the major, uh, I, I forget what they're actually called, there's a name for the type of vault which is holds the uh, backing capital, I forget that term off the top of my head. But anyways, he robs all those, takes all that, uses that to dump all that money into massive amounts of production. He does it immediately so he can't be caught in it, he, he does it quickly enough that nobody catches him. Because, I mean, after all, this is a, the new robotic society of economy, so people buying tons of uh, robotic parts and equipment and, and materials isn't actually all that unusual does so, builds his little fortress, the one that's in Mega Man 4, and just holds up at it and says, screw all y'all, I'm gonna live here with my, uh, with Kalinka. The rest of the world can go screw itself. I'm sick of this damn place. Well, it turns out, uh, Blues, <laughs> nice little Tiny little subset here. Blues needs, uh, or at least Wiley believes he needs a very specific part to get to, to, to fix Blues' neural net. And so Blues is still kind of... And naturally, Blues thinks, well, okay, I need to find the most logical place in order to do that. Uh, let's see. The last known location for item A... I forget what it was, but, you know, item A and... What the heck? What What is that that keeps popping up? <laughs> I think that was the follow message, which is weird, because I have the follow message off. Thank you for the follow. Um, Blues is like, okay, where was the last known location of item A? Ah, that's right. This gentleman, Dr. Uh, uh, Sergei Cossack, Sergei Cossack, has, uh, has, has acquired it and has it in his fortress. So naturally, the most logical thing for Blues to do is to go and kidnap Kalanka, who happened to be, uh, who is a lot easier to get hold of than Cossack himself, and then blackmail Cossack into working for, uh, working for Wiley, aka Blues, in order to procure this device in order to fix Blues. It's just a whole cluster of, of, of crap, right? Right about this time, leading into Mega Man 4, we have a, another little political scenario. A very close to, no, it's okay, Samurai. Uh, a very close to a Cold War going hot circumstance, right? Here's what happens. In, in summary, forgive me for summarizing. I don't want to recite a whole book to you guys right now. The idea is that the Soviet Union, uh, which is broke at this point in time, by the way, and the uh, the Greater Britain Republic, which actually con uh, contains quite a bit of Europe as well. Yeah, yeah, okay, it's a following thing. That should be off. That's so strange. I'll fix it later. Anyways, I don't want to lose my train of thought. So they, they get to a, a standoff where basically the Greater Britain, Britain Republic has nothing but robotic forces at this point in time. And they also employ a lot of the Robot Master models that Cossack designed, which he also used during his robbery of... You see where this is going. So the Soviet Union blames them for the robbery. The Greater Britain Republic blames the Soviet Union for having military excursions into the Eastern European zone. And the whole thing gets really tight to the point where the two forces are basically on the verge of declaring war on each other. 
Oh yeah, trust me, Bregwin. In in actual fact, in my story, the nations never actually recover. They disintegrate. Damn it, guys. They disintegrate completely. Uh, and and it, re it reaches the point where we hit Mega Man X. And Mega Man X is effectively, in many ways, a, a post-apocalyptic society. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, moving on. Um, with the Cold War turning hot, it reaches the cir circumstance where they believe... That, you know, they're like, oh, well, we have to sit in it now. Dr. Light, at this point in time, is starting to go just a little bit downhill in terms of a mentality, in terms of his uh, sanity, in terms of what he believes is acceptable. Remember, he was thinking about what uh, Wiley was saying, and he kind of agrees. All this political crap has been pissing Light off for the last five decades, okay? Or is it four decades? It's, it's a freaking long time, longer than most people have been alive, right? Absolutely forever. So, um... He's, he's he's sick to death of this, and he's willing to do things that are necessary to make that happen. So he decides, okay, you know what? I'm going to look into this whole robbery situation, figure out who actually did it, and then and then do it. So he sicks Rock on the situation. Now, Rock immediately, initially, Rock, because they're stupid, Goldvag. <laughs> it, it's it's the World War II thing that I mentioned earlier. The industry exists to, to, to serve... And, and produce robots. They would have to have a total economic restructure and infrastructure uh, re restructuring, excuse me for repeating that word so many times, in order to not focus on using robots at this point in time. Anyways, so the uh, Rock goes into this whole investigation and ends up getting really resentful of the situation and having to actually use his, his considerable skills and abilities on what is effectively just a, a judicial matter in which he has no jurisdiction, as he himself points out to Light several times. And Light keeps telling him, I don't care if you have jurisdiction. We're doing this to save lives. Try to remember that. It gets to the point where Rock discovers that Cossack did it. He successfully uh, figures it out with Roll's help, I'm at it. It's actually Roll, pretty much, who figures it out, actually. Roll has a much bigger role in my story than she does in the actual Mega Man games. Because um, she's basically the, uh, the one who should have been Mega Man. If I can diverge for a second, one of the parts in the early, in Mega Man One story was that Roll was severely damaged in the initial attack on Light Tech Factory, and Rock was not. That was a critically important thing because otherwise, Rock would have been at the stay at home support guy, which his mentality and pers personality support, and Roll, who is much more free willed and and strong and strong willed, determined, etc., is the person who would have actually gone out and fought the fought the war. Roll was damaged. They were on a time crunch. Rock was the one who had to get the upgrades, okay? So Roll has actually been very active throughout this whole story, throughout all, all of these games, and, and uh, very chomping at the bit, if you will, in her uh, perspectives. So Roll actually figures out what the hell's going on and points to Dr. Cossack and even manages to figure out where he is, where his, uh, his Siberian fortress is. And Light is like, okay, why don't we go ahead and point this out to to uh, the warring powers and, and let them look at him and use him and, and basically declare war against Cossack. Let them waste themselves on his fortress. Bring him down and bring him to justice and they'll get all that reclamation back and it will prevent war and it'll be great. And Rock and Roll both are appalled. Appalled at that idea. Because, see you around Marley Jr. Because Light is literally willing to sacrifice Cossack and his daughter and anyone else who happens to be living in the fortress, which, by the way, in, in my story is a lot more humans than just the two of them, um, just to avert a war. I mean, that's disgusting, right? At least from Rock and Roll's perspective. Ha ha. <laughs> so that leads to a unique situation where Rock takes it upon himself. He, he can't dissuade Light from this, and Rock is still bound by the Prime Law, the only law that he's actually bound by, uh, at least up until Mega Man 7. And so Rock goes to Cossack's fortress himself in order to literally get in there and figure out what the crap. And this leads to a weird situation because, remember, during this whole time, Blues had gotten that part by blackmailing Cossack. Remember that? So, Blues... Um, Cossack uh, was, you know, was willing to work with Wily, and eh, let's just say that 
word of that gets out right about when Rock is going there, which leads the two nations, with addition, in addition to Light's information, is like, oh my god, Wily's at it again, we need to destroy that fortress. They're actually thinking about nuking the place. Uh, the only thing that stops them is the fact that nukes are something that even the less intelligent members uh, of the nations kind of realize they shouldn't be using at this point in time. There's there's a subplot about that that starts all the way back in Mega Man 1. The idea is they already have used so many nuclear weapons on this planet that uh, using any will literally off, offset, upset the balance of most of the planet, you know, literally on a global scale, uh, because of how delicate the overall balance of the, uh, of the ecosystem is at this point in time. So that's the only thing that stops them from not nuking the fortress into the ground. <laughs> so what ends up happening is Rock gets in there, goes through, tries to fit it. Blues has been taken over by Wiley, or taken off to Wiley. Wiley uses the, the part to repair Blues. Blues is actually functioning for basically the first time in the franchise at this point in time as an actual sentient sapient being. Still a little screwed up in the head, but, you know, capable of thought for the first time in a long time. And is like, oh my god! And immediately goes and gets Kalinka and takes her back, because he has a strong ethics program that was built into him. Ironically, not by Light, but by Wily, way back when, he, when they were first building him. So, Blues rescues Kalinka and gets him back right about when Rock has finished defeating Cossack. And that's when it is revealed that this whole thing was precipitated by Dr. Wily! Because, again, Blues isn't really functioning correctly. And remember, Cossack thinks he was being blackmailed by Wily. So, between those two pits of information, Rock, is, Rock at this point believes that Wily is beyond redemption. This is why I call this Wily's tragedy. Remember, Wily was basically kidnapped at the end of 3, dragged into this situation in order to help repair one of his mistakes, which he agreed to immediately, ignorant of everything that was going on with regards to the, you know, to, to the Cossack and the war and all that crap, because he was just hanging out in his fortress, the fourth fortress, um... Hiding there. Personally, I'd say summer, Shadow, but that's just me. Um, and so poor Wily. Poor Wily is literally just hiding in his fortress, and then Rock just starts tearing through there. Um, and I mean just crushing it. He is pissed. Rock has given every chance to Wily. Rock has tried. He's literally tried to kill himself for Wily since the first game. Rock has done so much, and Light has done so much, and Wily is still up to his old schemes. Rock gets to Wily, nearly kills him at the end of 4. Very nearly kills him. Gets so pissed off that he... He does something interesting. Rock, if you remember, his neural network is based off of Blues's. And all of Blues's neural information, his, his brain, for all intents and purposes, is uploaded into Skull Castle 4. Pretty much the whole castle, like the processing power of the whole castle, was working on Blues's uh, net. That's how advanced it was, right? and was working on the process of fixing it with the parts and information that uh, that was gotten. So, Rock, in his rage, does something he's done before and uploads his own malice and aggravation into that, which then merges with Blues's in that, which also causes the fortress to self-destruct, which is why the fortress blows up in such a, a cloud of doom at the end of Mega Man 4. That is the true, that is the first thing that I could actually call the Maverick virus at that point in time. The combination of Rock's malevolent thoughts, literally given code form, and Blues's mental, Blues's deranged and broken uh, sentience and sapience. Which is exactly what the Maverick virus is, isn't it? You're still sentient, you're still sapient, you don't think right, you are incredibly malevolent and go out of your way to cause harm and injury to others. So... Yeah, that is, for all intents and purposes, the Maverick virus. And this is why the Maverick virus has always been so prolific and so dangerous and so deadly and so easy to spread because it is combined of the two most brilliant uh, robotic sentient minds that have ever been created combined into one. Blues and rock. Uh, yes, sure you, he does. <laughs> so like I said, this is the beginning of, of, of Dr. Wiley's tragedy because... Imagine both their perspectives. On the one hand, we have Rock, who I've already described his perspective. He is blindly pissed off at Wily, and he is unwilling to cut him any slack. He only stops himself from killing him because, yeah. Wily is a complete innocent in, 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 almost in so many ways. Wily is just sitting here in his fortress trying to do good, trying to make up for the ba uh, mistakes of his past, when one of his friends storms in and tries to destroy him. 
this is when Wiley's mind snaps for the final time. This is when Wiley gives up on all pretenses of being a decent person, giving, give, being a better person, doing good, you know, trying to redeem himself. No, all of that is gone. All that is gone. Instead, Wiley spends the rest of his days fixated on the only thing that's left for him, the one person who took from him his chance at redemption. Remember what he says in Mega Man X4? He is my nemesis. This is a bad translation, but it's true. He is my nemesis. Our, our rivalry gives me motivation in life. He is speaking of rock when he's talking about that in Mega Man X4. It can be debated he's talking about light, but in my interpretation, in my story, he's talking about rock. In other words, from Mega Man 4 onward, the only thing that motivates Wily at all is his conflict with rock. And from that point on, Wily doesn't actually care about conquering the world or fixing the world, or even destroying Rock. He, he actually, I, I guess you could say he enters a bit of a, the Joker state, because he doesn't actually want to kill Rock. He wants to contest with Rock, because Rock ruined his life. Twice. And so Wily spends the rest of his days going out of his way, well, not all the rest of his days, but he spends the next two games, five and six, trying to ruin Rock's life. And then, and I'm, I'm going to skip ahead a bunch, because Mega Man 5 and Mega Man 6 are basically Rock going out of his, or excuse me, Wily going out of his way to try and literally just wreck Rock's own hopes and, and dreams and ambitions of having a decent retirement life, etc. Because remember, Wily knows Rock very well. He knows exactly what Rock cares about, he knows exactly where to hurt him, he knows exactly what he wants, and he knows exactly how to deny him that. So, that leads into Mega Man 5, uh, in which he, he he frames blues, basically, which is very easy to do, because remember, at this point in time, nobody had any actual idea of what the hell was going on with blues, so that was an easy task. In Mega Man 6, he stages that tournament, a way of peacefully having battle robots actually be a part of the world stage without actually having war or conflict, which he then turns into war and conflict. The tournament was actually set up by Rock, in my version. Rock was trying to find a way to have a, 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 a in-between point, a uh, compromise between the war machine, which needs to keep existing for everyone's economy to function, and... The fact that he doesn't want there to be war and death and destruction and horribleness. So Rock comes up with this idea of the robot tournament. Have it be a, a sport. Have it be a kind of thing in a safe, controlled environment where they can fight each other and, and it'll be great. You know, not even a proxy war situation. It's just, you know, a, a miniature little... I guess it actually is kind of a proxy war situation. Because the idea was that political debates would actually be settled in the tournament. In, 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 like, the old style, you, you hire a very skilled knight to fight for you, and if he wins, you're right. Kind of a situation, right? So, the two, uh, the rope, the, you know, the whole uh, tournament that Rock came up with was this great idea that Wily deliberately went out of his way to pervert and, and break and turn it into another function of war to get back at Rock. Now... At the end of 6, Wily is actually jailed for the first time since all the way back in 1, if you'll remember. Uh, Wily is jailed and basically tossed into the biggest prison that they have available. And the intention was that they were actually going to do something to him pretty horrible, uh, similar to the lines of what they actually do to um, uh, Dr. Vale in the Mega Man Z series. Yeah, kind of like the Provings, actually. Very good idea. Or a very good example of that. <sighs> that, of course, doesn't happen because Wily had a backup plan. That leads into Mega Man 7. Now, Mega Man 7's relevance to this series is basically defined by the word Bass. Ultimately, the only story to be told in Mega Man 7 is that of Bass. Uh, or Bass, if you prefer. I call him Bass, because screw you. The idea here is that, remember that program back in Mega Man 4, that is the Maverick virus. Well, Wily got a hold of that Maverick virus and decided to go ahead and try and refine it. <laughs> it's okay, Rosulia, I understand. Uh, he decides to refine it into something because he believes that between the combination of Rock's amazing intellect and Blues's capacity for learning, which, by the way, surpasses Rock's, that's actually why he was so unstable. He was learning with uh, such incredible rapidity that he would change his mind, literally, every few microseconds. It, it was intenable, right? So he tries to compare. So he, cr he tries to combine these two things and and you know start studying the Maverick virus and creates a new whole new sapiens and sentience out of it, which is which is Bass. Uh, Bass. This is one of the reasons why Bass is the way he is. He is antagonistic and violent, but he's not actually evil. 
He has no actual intention to go and kill just for the sake of it. He is simply more aggressive than most other are, mothers are, if you understand. That's just not a fish. Um, ooh, shiny, Resilia. Um... So Mega Man Seven is all is is this is entirely the story of Bass, but this is also when he builds uh, Zero. As I mentioned, Wily uh, Wily builds Bass, and Bass is so capable of sentience that he completely ignores Wily, ignores his orders, ignores his concepts. He doesn't even have any respect for the man. It gets to the point where Bass is completely willing to fight up against him. So it's like, okay, I need something better. I need something to really prove that Rock is wrong. And this is where his, his mindset takes a little bit of a different take, because it was asked earlier, does Wiley actually sympathize with, uh, with, with uh, synthetic rights, uh, or something along those lines? Wiley believes that the best way to show that he was right all along, all the way back to World War III, and all those incidents, is to create a truly sentient robot whose only purpose is to kill all humans. This is zero. So what he actually does now, he, now his pro, his his capacity, synthetic humans. Thank you. His capacity to make this is limited. He actually try most of my Mega Man Seven story is Wily failing over and over and over to create this truly sentient uh, concept. This this first Reploid, right? And it gets to the point, even though he's already actually made one, because the last time he made a Reploid, he made it with light. Well. Then Bass steals a bunch of stuff from Light's office. You remember that in the Mega Man 7? All that stuff gets stolen, and of course there's some blueprints and plans which Bass literally forces Wily to build into him with Bass in trouble. Um, but the other plans that were in there were Light's own plans, because Light had never actually given up his thoughts of the, the idea of a sentient robot. And Light always wanted to continue forward with that. So with some of Light's notes, Wiley believes he can make that last step, but Light's notes require an existing model, which has, which basically has uh, Android-level intelligence. Wiley doesn't have access to that. Blues is gone, and basically fixed at this point. Bass is a complete rogue element. What's he going to do? Well, he kidnaps a human. He kidnaps a human with long blonde hair, and... Uh, basically does a total body conversion on him, replaces virtually everything in him, including his brain, with uh, with a cybernetic and synthetic part instead. Does a compl and, he, and he does it very particularly. He converts each cell of the man's brain over to a form of a... basically a robotic equivalent of a cell. I, I don't want to get into specifics. One at a time. And it's a long, meticulous process. Like I said, he spends pretty much all of Mega Man 7 uh, doing this. Well, in this case, it's more like a human wanting to kill all of humanity, Shadow, if you really think about it. So he converts him into this new being. Does the total total by conversion, we have zero. And then he's like, okay. Down, and then just as one last little touch of... Well, no, I, oh, no, he doesn't do that yet. He doesn't do it yet. So he's still working on zero. Mega Man shows up. Wily, at this point, is a fairly broken man at this point in time. I think that's pretty clear. He's literally trying to build a robot to kill everyone in the world because screw you. Like, that's the only thing that he's got left at this point in time. And that's all of his mentality. Um, Mega Man shows up, tries to kill Wily. Almost actually kills Wily. Right? Blue, uh, uh, ba uh, Bass comes out of absolutely nowhere. Rescues Wily, gets him out. And, you know, and then Wily loses a lot of his work in process, but of course he doesn't lose the work on Zero, otherwise certain things wouldn't happen. This leads into Mega Man 8. Now, Mega Man 8 is the odd man in the series. Fitting Mega Man 8 into the rest of the Mega Man series is actually harder to do than you'd think, because it really does feel like a Gaiden game amidst the Mega Man series. It's also worth noting that in Inafune's original storyline, the evil energy that he discovers in Mega Man 8 is actually what the Maverick virus comes from. Even though it's evil energy from space. Whatever. The way I have fit Mega Man 8 into it is actually pretty seamless, if you think about it. Uh, Duo and the evil robot who's never named... Seriously, look it up. It's never named. Are both basically a byproduct of another science fiction story that I haven't decided if I want to actually write into the Mega Man story or not yet. Let me put it to you this way. The Mega Man story is not confined to Earth. 
it's well established even in the existing games that uh, no, bear with me, Samurai. Even I mean that's a fair idea. I could chop Mega Man Eight and chop Mega Man and Bass just right out of the story, and it wouldn't even affect anything. But um, we know even in the stories, you know, Mega Man Three and Mega Man uh, f uh, Four, I believe, both go out of the way to emphasize that there's extraplanetary people. You know, Gemini Man stage in Mega Man Three is on another planet, for example. This is a solar, you know, this is a space-bound race. This is a space-bound society, right? The idea here is that some of the individuals who went off to uh, go and, and form their own little thing kind of formed their own little private empires, which then started to kind of conflict with each other. And long story short, one of them in, uh, encountered something that was actually planted there. This is kind of how the, the Imperium finally actually weaves into the Mega Man storyline. Uh, one of them finds Phazon. Which, as I believe I've mentioned before, Phazon is actually a rather prevalent uh, thing in the Imperium. Now, this fa uh, it's, it's Phazon. I, I don't know what else to say about it. If, if you don't understand, shrug. Go, go play Metroid Prime 1, 2, and 3. Uh, the, the people find this Phazon and starts ma start making robots out of basically powered by and, and functioning in Phazon. That goes about as well as you can imagine. So that society self-destructs. I'm, I'm skipping forward a lot. There's a whole story there that I've never actually sat down and written. But basically that whole society, which is in another system, is completely destroyed. And goes to the point where there's nothing left other than a few remaining robots whose only purpose uh, that they still have is to seek out and exterminate all sources of the Phazon. Now the funny part about this is... Uh, the uh, the way that Duo and the other robots like him function is they are also powered by Phazon. Now, they acknowledge this. There's actually a whole thing I had where Duo is talking with Rock about how, you know, Rock is like, if you ever complete your mission, you will have to kill yourself. And Duo says, yes, and I can't wait for it. My version of Duo is basically someone who is in a constant state of pain and grief and someone who is actually desperate to die, someone who has been wanting to die for years upon years as he's been suffering in this in, in, under, under the circumstances. Remember, this is a man who was used as a war tool and then watched everyone around him die. Robots and humans alike, by the way. So Duo is powered by Phazon, just like the evil creature is. Bit of Phazon gets on Earth. Now, thankfully, <laughs> Wily gets to it before it starts to spread and completely cover the entire planet Earth into it. And Wily starts using tiny, very tiny bits of it to power his robots. Why? Two reasons. One, Wily is intelligent. <laughs> and knows that if he used a large chunk of Phazon to power his robots, it would spread and get bad very quickly. Because Wily is actually very smart. He catches onto this. But two, because he only has so much and he doesn't actually know that it will grow uh, un under the wrong circumstances. I'm saying this wrong. The point is he doesn't want it to grow. But he still wants to go ahead and use it in order to, to you know, try a few new things, try a few new experiments. That leads to all the Robot Masters in 8 uh, and the events of 8, blah, blah, blah. Making underwear out of red lyrium. Yeah, so the end result of Mega Man 8 is Rock goes by and deals with all these things. It leads to the end of Ro uh, Mega Man 8, which, if you've ever seen the end of Mega Man 8, it's one of the dumbest freaking, most horrible endings I've ever seen in gaming. And I've seen some bad endings in gaming, but my ending's a little bit different. Uh, my ending basically results in Rock actually being affected. He's been affected by the phase on this whole time. Um, and he. Uh, yeah, as, as Shadow points out, a fair amount of his internal circuitry actually has Phazon in it. And Samurai has already guessed where this is going. You suck, Samurai. Anyways, a fair amount of Phazon basically infuses itself into uh, Rock at a, at a very uh, small level because of his contact with it re repeatedly, right? Duo literally rips the last chunk of Phazon out of Rock, <laughs> pulls out a chunk of his chest, and apologizes... Because he understands now that, he, for the first time in his existence, he understands the idea that someone else actually wants to keep living. And I know that sounds weird, and I'm even saying it sardonically, but that is actually something that was a new idea to Duo. The idea of wanting to keep existing was alien to him. So he understands that Rock wants to keep existing, and now that he is going to kill him, rather than before where he would... Because throughout the whole thing, whenever a Duo destroys someone, he, he basically honors them and says, you know, this is for gratitude to you. I, I, I give this to you because he it, everyone wants to die, right? So the final time when he, he goes to kill Rock, 
by ripping the phase on out of him quite literally he apologizes to him because he understands rock actually wants to keep surviving and this is when rock says no it's okay I, i'm okay with dying at this point in time and then duo takes off and self-destructs in space <laughs> end of the phase on threat uh or is it bum 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 there's something about Dr. Light I haven't been talking about, forgive me, but it's an undercurrent thread that's been going throughout Mega Man 7 and 8, and that's the fact that Light has been getting a little more fixated on how screwed up this situation is. So I'm just going to fast forward because, again, I'm just giving you a huge, a brief synopsis of the overall storyline. Light, by the time of Mega Man 9, is effectively the head roboticist of the entire planet. He actually is not just the guy who's good at it, He's the guy in charge of it. He has forced his way, struggled, struggled, pushed his way to the point where he is actually in charge of all robotics uh, and all robotic matters. And in more ways than one, because of the fact that he controls the most powerful force on the planet is effectively actually the dictator of the planet. This leads to a major point that uh, becomes uh, that basically leads to the beginning of Mega Man 9, and that is the idea of planned obsolescence in robots. Because he argues it is the only way to ensure that no robots... See, Light's reasoning is this. Any androbot or robot that continues to exist for too long will simply become too adaptive and too understanding and too, uh, too fluid in its thought process to the point where it can no longer be considered to be safe. It cannot be controlled anymore. And anything that cannot be controlled must be removed from the equation. And that's how Light thinks at this point in time. Because remember, he's been kind of... Eh, so, uh, <laughs> he introduced this planned obsolescion idea. You have a certain amount of time as a robot of any kind before you are junked. And the irony of this, and I, I, I haven't actually decided this, but I think my, my, the, the original idea I had was Light did this not on purpose, um, is that about the time when you get to, to actually having sentience is about the time when you get to planned obsolescence. In other words, you just about reach the point where you can be considered to have your own sentience, sentience and sapience, and then you're tossed into a junker and smashed into bits. Now, Roll has had her own subplot this entire time. That subplot is the idea that she has been uh, basically... She and Blues have been trying to oppose Light in this whole thing. Light has effectively become his own... A different form of threat than Wily ever was. Wily was always, I'm a big guy with an army. Light is, I have an army, and I have public support. And I have political support. And I have backing. And so Roll and all the other people involved with that agree that they can't just go and defeat Light's army and then defeat Light. It doesn't... <laughs> Sorry, Harvesty. It doesn't work that way, right? It doesn't work that way. You can't just beat Light. He's a different kind of threat. And so Roll and Blues have been trying to get information out about what Light's doing, trying to engender sympathy for the Androbots, trying to introduce the idea of maybe new kinds of jobs. Trying, and, and one of the things that Roll especially has been pushing out is the idea of de-weaponizing uh, a lot of these Androbots. Which has not been going over well, as you might imagine. In comes Wily. Right about at this point in time... Now, okay, this is actually really important. During Mega Man 8... <laughs> While he had the Phazon power, the Phazon proved to be the critical element to finally stabilize Zero for the first time. Mega Man 8, in my story, is when he finally finished Zero. Actually completed him, yes, with a little bit of Phazon. You can see where that's going already. Um, he does two things, primarily, three things, actually. He creates Zero in such a way that Zero himself is supposed to be an unstoppable killing machine, which he kind of is. And gives him the best weapons, best armor, literally puts all of his best into Zero. Makes Zero the best fighting robot that arguably will ever exist. And indeed, some would argue he is the best, so shrug. So that's the first plan. The second plan is he shoves the Maverick virus into him. Full tilt, uh, full, full everything. You know, he makes sure that if under any circumstance a sufficient amount of damage is actually done to Zero, the, the Maverick virus would erupt into whatever is nearby. Because his logic is that whatever erupts out of Zero would probably be another robot. And in fact, it would probably be Rock. 
Thus, the irony of the situation, at least from Wily's perspective, is that Rock would be become his ultimate fighting robot because he would be in, become infused with the Maverick virus, and the logical conclusion would happen. As you know from history, that actually was Sigma. I'll get to that later. So, that's the second phase of the plan. The third phase of the plan is the one I already gave. Phase on. Now, this one is actually kind of funny. Because phase on needs something to grow on, right? Well, so there's a bit of phase on in Zero, helping to power him, actually. And it's basically designed so that if anything was actually... So, if uh, phase on... Uh, at this point in time, human beings are being Borg pretty much all over the place, Golvag. Uh, at this point in time, uh, oh, excuse me, blah, 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 blah. Zero has a decent amount of phase on powering him, right? Functioning him, giving, giving him the strength and ability to be this incredible fighting robot. Um, if Zero's damaged, the virus gets out. If Zero is destroyed, the phase on gets out. Anyone remember what happens in Mega Man X1? Now, the funny part is, you could be like, well, why doesn't the world go to hell in a handbasket in two days? Well, that was on Sigma's Fortress, which was over the water, which then sank. So, the Phazon did get there, it just didn't get into the obvious way. It instead got into the oceans, uh, the bottom of the ocean, which made it spread in other, much worse ways. But I am, of course, getting far ahead of myself. But that was Wily's three-stage plan for revenge. Screw the world, screw everyone, you took my life from me, you're too dumb to actually take care of yourselves, you're no longer worth worthy of me saving you. You are no longer worthy of me spe spending my time and effort and intellect trying to fix your problems when all you're trying to do is constantly make things work for yourselves, you freaking morons. So, you're either all gonna die, you're all gonna find someone else who kills you, or you're all gonna be worse than dead. Screw you. So that happens in Mega Man 8. A funny thing happens, though. Uh, no, Shadow. It may be at first, but not really. Phazon, my, my version of Phazon is probably stronger than the actual Phazon is in Metroid Prime. Because my, my first version of Phazon is damn strong. Anyways, um, <laughs> let's just say, have you played Mega Man X5, Samurai? So... This leads us to Mega Man 9. Now, Mega Man 9's storyline almost unfolds itself, based on what I've already told you. Wiley, but there's one critical component. Wily has spent all of his focus and effort on the Zero Project. He has really pushed himself to it. And something odd happens as a result of that. For the first time since World War III, Wily's mind actually works. By sheer force of will and continuous... For those of you who don't know, the way the brain kind of works, this is a huge summary... Um, the nerves, the, the electrical impulses and the chemicals that, that go through the brain basically bond nerves closer and closer together, which is how uh, thoughts work how and how opinions and ideas are formed, that kind of thing. So Wiley has put so, so, so much of himself into the Zero Project that his brain has finally actually repaired itself. And his thoughts are his own for the first time ever. Now, the funny thing is, he designed Zero in such a way that two things would happen. One, he wouldn't be released for many, many years. Um, you know, like like two or three decades. Two, he's basically locked away to the point where even Wily can't get in there and get him out. He is... That's done. So Wily's just sitting there, and Wily experiences probably the most horrifying human emotion, at least in my opinion. Shame. Absolute, utter shame. Guilt. Grief. And... He doesn't know how to deal with it. And so Wiley continues to hide in his ninth fortress at this point in time when he starts to hear about uh, this massive... Uh... Okay, so back to Roland Blues' story. The two of them have been trying to stage this demonstration to gain... Uh, under... to basically, they wanted to show in a public light what's happening to these Androbots, right? And it's horrifying, but they literally decide to go ahead and literally show the junking as Androbots are pleading for their lives on national and public television so people understand what's going on, right? You know, this is what's happening. We need to stop this. Bass shows up. Bass shows up, starts killing the crap out of a lot of people, and, is, and all, the, all the humans who are running the machines, doing the junking, kills all of them. Gets, gets some of the Androbots off, flees with them. That's going to turn into its own story thread in a bit. That kind of screws things up, because then Light basically declares a martial law. 
He says, this is enough. We have we have a rogue ro robot. I'm sure Wily is to blame. Right about this point in time, Bass gets together eight robots, <laughs> which you may recognize, including Mermaid Woman, or whatever her name is. Wait, I think it's Mermaid Woman. Anyways, so Bass is actually leading these eight robots in effectively a, a true robot revolution. This is actually, if you're paying attention, the first robot revolution that's happened in the series, in, in my version of things. Everything before has been a human or fake running things. So as a result of this, Wily comes forward. Remember, this is actually Wily for the first time in Splash Woman. Thank you. For the first time in absolutely forever. And so he Wily at this point is like, oh, God, <laughs> let me help. And he's just dead. That's basically what he says. He co he goes to roll because light is past gone at this point. He goes to roll and he says, let me help. Let me help. So w L Wily, Roll, and Blues effectively become the good guys of the story. That leads me to the other uh, story arc that's been running ever since uh, Mega Man 5 or 6. I forget when it really started. And that is the fact that Rock is suicidal as of this point in time. Um... Uh, Light has taken over influence, Golvag. I mean, he has political power, but that political power is backed, if you know what I mean. So, let's just look at the, the parties. Now, Light over here is effectively the villain, as of, as of Mega Man 9. Full Tilt, the villain, right alongside Bass, who is leading a Full Tilt ro robot revolution because robots are being junked. And then Wily, Blues, and Roll over here are the actual good guys. And then there's Rock. Now, I mentioned Rock was suicidal, right? Rock, at this point in time, can't actually bring himself to just self-destruct. It's too easy in his own mind. It doesn't actually accomplish anything. He needs to actually go out there and do something. Rock goes out, and this is, this is leading somewhere, I swear. Rock goes out, starts fighting against Bass's revolution with force, because that's what Rock knows, okay? Rock, at this point, has become so jaded to violence... So, so completely casually arrogant that he literally, I had this scene in mind where he literally shoots Splash Woman to death as she's lying on the ground, pleading for her life, shooting her in the head over and over until her circle, her, her vocal processors just stop working. Because he doesn't care anymore. He just has to put them, they're just another enemy. They're just another target. They're not even people at this point in time, right? Well, as you can see, as you can probably guess where this is going, it gets to the point where Rock goes after Bass himself and destroys him. Uh, Rock defeats, you know, all the eight robots and goes after Bass and just utterly curb stomps him, obliterates him, and is completely merciless in him. I want you to picture, like, the most brutal storm, form of fighting you could think of. I, I Literally, he, he grabs pieces of, his, of Bass's uh, armor, rips it off, impales it into him... <laughs> You know, shooting directly into the bass's mouth, uh, destroying his ocular cable with some of his weapons. You know, Rock annihilates Bass to the point where Bass is compl is just had no idea how to comprehend this, and Bass, realizing that he is inferior, <laughs> you notice suicide is a common threat here. Begs for death, begs for Rock to put him out of his misery because Bass is the inferior, and then Rock, feeling vindictive, leaves him there. This is when things get interesting. Uh, this is when, I shouldn't say that, this is when Wily and, and Roll and Blues come back into the picture. All three of them confront Rock over this entire situation, because Rock at this point in time is very Judge Dredd, if you know, if you know the description there. And they're like, Rock, this, what are you doing? Okay. And Rock, uh, there's one other little tidbit that goes through the Mega Man 9 thread, which basically Light, in a political ploy, decides to support Rock. Decides to publicly say that he is on Rock's side. Now, Rock, who at this point in time only really has emotional attachment to two people left in his life anymore, that'd be Roll and, and Light, thinks of, uh, thinks of Light still as his father, right? So Light saying, you're doing the right thing, son, kind of is one of the things that helps push Rock this far uh, when we get through Mega Man, uh, Mega Man 9. And so w Wily approaches him, and, and I want to stress how this probably looks from Rock's perspective. Try to pres imagine Rock's mind at this point in time. Yes, that's correct, Shadow. 
Uh, Rock is is there talking down Wily and talking down uh, Wily. Roll is there trying to talk down Rock and Blues is there. You know his own brother and the person who has recovered. You know Blues even talks to Rock says maybe you're having the same kind of malfunction I had. We have the same structure of his of, of our neural net. You know maybe you're, there's something wrong with you. And Rock starts to consider it until he realizes that they're working with Wily. Anyone working with Wily has to be evil, right? Right. So that leads into a bad situation very quickly. Rock actually very seriously injures Roll, uh, destroys half her body. Blues, who is nowhere near the kind of fighting robot that Rock is, can only get away. Literally, just barely escapes, leaving Wily with Rock. Now, if you'll remember, the one law that Rock has never actually been able to outdo is the prime law. Do not hurt do not harm a human. That's been true all the way up in this point in time. The uh, <laughs> the truly funny situation that happens here is that what ends up happening is Rock literally is going to go ahead and kill Wily, do everything he can to override his own processors to kill Wily because he knows doing so will cause his own meltdown. That's what actually happens if you violate the prime law by accident, basically. You <laughs> complete effectively a nuclear meltdown. It, it would take out quite a bit of space. So he's going to force himself as hard as he can to actually kill Wily and in the process be destroyed, ending his suffering. Well, an unexpected bomb arrives in the form of Light, who comes in and takes Wily into custody. Takes Wily into custody and, and claps Rock back on the back and says, Well done, son. We've got a lot more good use for you in the future. Mega Man 10 comes around. <sighs> Robenza, remember that? The idea of Robenza uh, and its connections to the Mavic virus are obvious. So forgive me for reiterating them. Yeah, exactly, Harvesty. He is destroying himself to finally get rid of the one true evil he's known in his own life. In his whole life. <laughs> oh my god. Poor, poor Rock. If you're paying attention, one of the themes of this entire story is that there's no villains, really. Everyone involved who turns to evil, it, it does evil, I'm not going to mistake that, but they do so as a result of, of their suffering. They do so as a result of their tragedy. They do so because they are a victim. Everyone is a victim in this story. It only gets worse from here. So, Robenza, break, uh, I shouldn't say breaks out, it's actually been a problem. I, I start mentioning it in Mega Man 8 to really get those threads uh, going. In Mega Man 9, it becomes a lot more commonplace and is one of the reasons that Light is able to cement his power so much more. Mega Man 10 comes around, Robenza is a full-fledged outbreak, and is acting a lot like the Maverick virus. Well, <laughs> funny story. Um, Wily's castle, all the way back in Skull Castle 4, um, just kind of kept up... Basically, he had a network of satellites, uh, both here and on other planets, which were keeping... Uh, which were basically backing up his stuff on a regular basis. So all of that data, which contained the original Maverick virus, the you know, the blues and rock combination, uh, that kind of started bouncing around the network, and, and Wiley just kind of forgot it was there, because he was focused on other things, until it started disseminating itself into the random, like, imagine, if you will, you're walking along and you get a few random bits of data. You don't even notice it, because it's just being transmitted across, you know, half the planet. And that starts to grow once you get a few more random bits of data, completing more of the more of the program, and a few more bits of data, and a few more bits of data. This is why this has been a gradually increasing problem ever since Mega Man 8. Um, so, the Robenza is literally a very mild form of an incomplete Maverick virus, which is slowly exploding. This is why Wiley has the cure. He actually successfully made a functional Maverick virus. Put it in zero. Yeah, it's it's a program sneeze. That's a good way to put that. Um, so Wiley's you know, Wiley literally has a cure for this. He does actually develop a cure for Robenza. He does actually make it. Uh, mm. <laughs> and starts distributing it. <laughs> And then an ironic thing happens, because Wily needs 
funds for the first time since Mega Man 1. He needs funds and materials to make more of the cure. And no one's willing to give it to him because he's Dr. Freaking Wily. Now, Rock, uh, at the behest of Light, goes out to, de to put down the sick robots, which is the Mega Robot Masters of 10. All of those sick robots, though, are... The way I describe it is is very a uh, horror story style. They are it's it's very much like being infested in the Zerg swarm. They are fully sentient, fully aware, fully cognizant, and in absolutely no way in control of themselves. Lack the ability to take to to do anything for themselves. They are fully under the control of the virus. This makes it even more horrifying because Rock at this point is gone. He is gone. He. <laughs> So I want you to imagine him approaching, you know, Nitro Man or whatever, and Nitro Man is begging him for mercy, begging him for help. Please get this thing out of me. Please cure me with this. I know there's a cure. I've heard there's a cure. Please, God, I'm begging you. Just get this in me. I just want to go back to my life. And Rock is just killing him. Brutally. By the end of Mega Man 10... <laughs> Uh, Wiley has basically reached a point where he realizes that he's about to die. He, his health is failing him finally to the point where he's not going to function anymore. Light is actually coming to the same realization. Um, both of the men take it in different perspectives. If you remember all the way back in Mega Man 1, one of the big themes of that and the Third World War was that Light came out of the Third World War with the best of his humanity and Wily came out of it with the worst of it. Well, after all the crap that they've been through over the last dozens of years or how many long it's been... Wiley comes out of it and realizes, I need to do something to help fix this world. I need, I need to help these people. I need to redeem myself and, and, and heal the wounds that I have caused. Light needs to ensure that his legacy goes on so that the future is going to be secure in the way he thinks it should be. So Light does two things. He starts programming ridiculously advanced pods, modules, which can transport and uh, can be based basically anywhere, you know, regardless of terrain or environment. He plants them on uh, other planets. He plants them on the, on the Earth, all over the place. These are the power-up capsules in the X series. Each one of them contains an individual aspect of his own code and programming so that he can ensure that when he interacts with the second part of his plan, uh, he can ensure that that member is going to be in, in undergoing his own vision of how the future should go. Second part of his plan. He's going to go ahead and make the... Uh, where the young are stupid and tricked by the old and bitter into killing each other. God, GTA 4 is a depressing game. Anyways... <laughs> Uh, yeah, pretty much, Shadow. Pretty, pretty much. Now, this is a minor form of the Maverick virus. Uh, and yeah, Samurai, that's, yeah. <laughs> you, you get the connection there as well. So, uh, the other thing he's going to do is he's prepping Rock. He's going to turn Rock into X. As I already mentioned, uh, this process basically destroys Rock by essentially, like I said, the, the best analogy I have is turning sand into glass. You know, it's the same base construction, but it is completely transformed into a new form uh, and, and reconstructed into the new mindset of X. Now, there's, there's an irony in this, but I'll get to that. Uh, Wily goes out of his way to go ahead and use the very last fortress he has. Literally his last one. This is, this is his tenth one. And he uses the forces in there to go out and literally rob the planet, right? He tries to take resources from here, takes all this stuff, you know, to pull everything in, it's the very last thing he can do. And I know that sounds horrible, but he's doing it so he can get this resources because he is literally dying. Like, he has months left. He is doing this so he can build all these... He can build enough of the cure in order to save the people, in order to remove the Maverick virus from the world, blah, blah, blah. And as you as you can understand, based on the way this story uh, actually goes, he succeeds. Wiley does actually succeed in doing this. Um, Rock... This is... <laughs> I love this scene in my head. I have it pictured. If you've seen Mega Man 10, I streamed it recently. The final battle actually occurs in space. <sighs> Rock goes to his, his space thing, where, where Wily is, is basically waiting for death. He has already constructed all the cures. It's already down in the world. It's going to be disseminated, you know, 
all this all of this will be taken out to the rest of the world and everyone will be in we will i will have cured the maverick virus from the world i will have done some good damn it so now he's just sitting there waiting to die rock shows up now wiley gives no resistance doesn't get into a mech no final battle no final battle um rock is <sighs> <laughs> Rock confronts Wily, and there's a very long conversation which I, I can't even do justice. I want you to picture this. They're standing on the underside of this of this station. So if you look up, you're looking at Earth, right? And Rock is like, you, you've, you've ruined everything. You've ruined my life. You've killed billions. You've destroyed everything. You can't even stop hurting people now. And Wily says, I needed it now. I, could, I needed it now. I had to do it now. And Wily defends himself. But as he's defending himself, he breaks down and cries. And he realizes that it's true, that he's still a horrible person, that he's still a terrible person, and he deserves to die. Please, Rock, kill me. Yes, I know. It's a common thing. Just bear with me. The important part here is Light, for the last several years, has been saying, we have to do terrible things for people's own good. But at no point in time has he voiced regret. It is necessary, and therefore acceptable, it is different than, it is necessary, and I regret it. Rock, in that moment, realizes the difference that has become between Light and Wily, and realizes that Wily is now more acting like Light used to. Once upon a time, Light was in tears at the very thought of sending Rock off to fight, even though it was necessary, even though even though it had to happen. He would he regretted it, he sobbed at it, he was torn up about it. And now Wiley is in that same state. Well light is like, oh, we will just do whatever. Remember back when Wiley was doing what he felt was necessary and doing you see you see how they've flipped roles here, right? It took all ten games, but they finally flipped roles. And so Rock, seeing this, realizes that Wily is just the, the same bitter, broken old man that he remembers as his friend from years and years ago. Perfect memory. And actually picks up uh, Wily and carries him... Uh, not carries him, but like, you know, Wily is limping on his shoulder, because Wily is weeks at this point away from Death's Door. Carries him back down to Earth. Lets him down in... Uh, in Rock's own home, actually, as, as a sign of respect, and then goes to confront Light. The final boss of the game is actually Light. What ends up happening is that Rock actually ends up... I mentioned earlier that Rock had been infused with Phazon. Remember that? Um... I also mentioned that he's been affected by the Maverick virus, just like everyone else has. Roll actually ends up saving his life at a point in time. Well, Brock is fighting Light uh, alongside Roll, who at this point has her own battle armor, has for some time, It's actually. Rock and Roll are fighting Light. Light has no problem killing them. They're in his way. Just, you know? Roll kills Dr. Light. Now, Dr. Light's backup plan is already in place. And he's already got the he's already got all the notes and all the details necessary to make the X project happen. Roll is 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 pretty stiff lipped with it. Rock is pretty devastated at this situation. Neither of them have any idea how to Rock doesn't want to be here anymore. Roll, who if you're paying attention, is effectively the real hero of most of this story. Uh, realizes that someone has to stand up and actually make a new future happen. You know, someone has to actually do the hard work, make the hard choices, and do it without getting be, turning into a Dr. Light or a Dr. Wiley. So she is going to basically become the head of a, a new collaborate... Uh, yeah, exactly. Light go, finally goes from Y to Z. Exactly right, Goldfog. Uh, Roll is going to become the head of a new organization, which is part... Uh, part Androbot, part human, and representative of both, in order to try and, and make a new world, which will eventually be the one we see in Mega Man X, especially to deal with the many crises, which at this point in time are choking the planet to death. Rock doesn't want to be here anymore. So Wily and Rock and Roll all get together and make one final idea. Rock will go ahead and undergo this process that Light had, but Wily can reprogram it. Light was going to have X come through and actually be, uh, be, be the perfect enforcer robot. Wily gets rid of all of that. Wily, Wily decides in a, in a perfect moment, Ari, rather than telling you what you should be, I'm not going to give you any programming, Rock. 
I'm going to let you decide for yourself. In 20 years, you will wake up a blank slate. And that is how X comes into being. Wiley dies of natural causes not too long after. Roll and Blues assist in the whole making of the New World situation. You know, etc. I don't know what else to say about that. Uh, Shadow, the metaphor is that a fall to darkness does not happen. You, you don't go from A to Z. You don't go from, I'm a good person. Yeah, go watch my Void drama. You don't go from, I'm a good person to, I'm evil. It's a step. Each step makes sense when you make it. You don't look and think, now that you're at M, you don't look back at A and think, how the hell did I get here? You look back at uh, L. That's that one step you made, right? And it made perfect sense. Y to Z, Z is the last step. Z is when you are truly evil, when you have finished that character growth, right? Anyways, it's the descent, as I described it. Roland Blues in my story do actually meet X, yes. Roland Blues are still alive when the X series starts. Uh, in fact, both of them end up dying in the first uh, in the first war against Sigma. Now, I don't I don't have, I don't want to keep going to the X series. Uh, most of the ideas of the X series are actually pretty normal compared to what actually happened in the X series. Sigma is the one who actually ended up finding Zero. Uh, Sigma is the one who ended up getting infected with the the Maverick virus, which you know how that went. Um, it actually ended up merging with his code. Remember, Sigma was actually a prototype. Reploid, who was basically the smartest, a.k.a. the quickest to adapt to new input. So he adapted to the new input of the Maverick virus uh, very, very quickly. And uh, Zero was destroyed, which led to Phazon being spread throughout the Earth. Now, the Phazon thing, I, I, would, I just want to tie this up real quick. If you've played Mega Man X5, you know that from that point onwards, certain... Uh, it, it, this actually kind of started showing up in Mega Man X3 to a little bit, but certain aspects of the world uh, are wrong. A little bit more sci-fi-y than even the Mega Man series should be. The fact that the Sigma virus can physically manifest, that's Phazon. That's what's actually doing that. If you, The more you go into the world, uh, the actual planet of Earth, the more Phazon there is. Because it's been kind of growing from within, like I said, o oceans, etc. And so by the time of Mega Man X5, we have an odd situation. Because... Uh, Spoiler alert, if, if you don't remember this, uh, in Mega Man X5, one of the things that happened was Sigma ends up dropping a colony onto the planet, which devastates the crap out of it, as indeed you'd expect. But in doing so, it cracks open the shell and reveals that phazon, uh, that exposed phazon, which is now lying under the surface and continuing to grow. This needs nat leads naturally into the end of the X series, in which that phazon becomes so overwhelming to the fact that humanity has to live in... Uh, domes, basically. Unified, separate domes where they can actually fight off and, and repel the Phazon. And that's why the rest of the world is in uninhabitable, except for certain specific zones. That, uh, that of course, leads me to... Uh, that, of course, leads to the Z, Z, Z series and the, you know... You see how that all ties in, how the Phazon thing ties into explaining why the Earth is basically a, a complete mess and actually is unsolvable by the Z series and why the X... X Z series actually occurs off planet because Earth has been abandoned by that point in time. So yeah, then the Zero series happens, and uh, Doctor Vale, <laughs> the most evil bastard in the setting, he is a villain. There's there's no redeeming that jackass. He is just an evil, psychopathic, screwed up madman. Uh, one thing of note though. Without intending to, one of the things that. Uh, when this trigger, we'll get to that later. Uh, one of the things, without intending to, uh, forgive me for getting into the metaphysical, but remember, this happens in the Imperium, so the fantastical exists here. Uh, by a, literally deliberately attaching a human soul to a robotic shell, Zero therefore had an actual soul, soul, right? Like an like an original soul. Hello, Nathrism. I'm gonna stop streaming in a minute. Eh. Um, as a result. This is one of the reasons why Zero has the ability to reconstitute so easily, and in case you're paying attention, that's also basically the same reason why Sigma is able to, although in a different manifestation. Uh, yeah, I, I know, Zed. It ended on such a cliffhanger, too. Anyways, um, I have my own story ideas for ZX. Basically, the idea being that uh, Roll 
way back in the X series, Roll and Blues, had come up with the idea to construct three... It, it was an idea ahead of her time, basically. You know, uh, for those of you not aware, in ZX, the thing that they did to stop the Maverick Wars and whatnot and the, the human versus reploid prejudice is that humans got lots of reploid parts, reploids got lots of human parts, and basically everyone became the same species as far as classification, which got rid of the classism, which which actually got rid of the wars. It actually worked. Holy crap, right? Um, that idea was actually posited by Roll all the way back in the X series, and then she died before she could actually implement it. But one of the things she also wanted to do was construct uh, three key uh, you know, prototypes of this. Part, part human, part reploid, and therefore capable of bridging the gap and actually being able to be partial observers and take caretakers and all that fun stuff.